The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. Tommy O'Brien, and we got a treat this morning. I'm joined by our man, Larry Pesavento, filling in for Tom this morning. Larry, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. How, How are you feeling today? Pretty I, good? I'm doing well, man. How about yourself? I listen to your program, of course, at 9. Great show, uh, and I appreciate you jumping on with me for the hour at 10 o'clock as well. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I don't know if I have two hours of information. Are you kidding? <laughs> we'll keep you on until 4 o'clock today, Larry. They'll all stay tuned, yeah. man. You know, you mentioned Goldman Sachs. Boy, you talk about a reversal. My goodness. This right? thing is its dropped about 10 points in a matter of... Uh, Oh, just an hour or so. It's not stopping, man. It's not. So it's yeah. even early this morning. I got it up there trading at about 2.11.44. Um, the slide began, of course. They come out with those earnings at about 7.30, I think, this morning. It goes from 2.09 down to about 2.04 at 8.30. It kind of hangs out. But then, yeah, from even the market opens down another 3 bucks, almost about 3%. Um, quite a number. And let me just pull up, Larry, to take a peek at what those numbers actually were. Uh, come on, there we go. So they beat on analyst estimates for the first quarter profit, but revenue being the number, right? So they generated 2.25 billion, quite a number in the period, 571 a share. Um, the estimate had been 489, so quite a beat on the earnings, but then revenue dropping 13% to 8.81 billion, and uh, the estimate had been 8.9. So you never like to see that top line number decreasing because you can always play games a little bit. You know, you can cut your costs with some profits, right? But you can't play games with how much money you take in over that time. Wow. I know I posted the weekly chart of Goldman Sachs, and, you know, we had that big. Uh, uh, break into December like everything else and nice. it has not rallied back like the rest of the market you know yeah. it's hardly been able to make a 50% retracement which the banking index led us all the way up so I don't know if that's a pretend of what could be coming but uh, pretty staggering you know, where those were yeah. even just looking at that chart right I mean what's the high up there approaching 280 almost and we're sitting at barely yeah, at 200 two right now 275.30 was a okay. high, yeah. Quite a and number, man. Yeah. And I heard you talking about our man Tiger Woods, man. Unfortunately, Larry, <laughs> we're not going to be showing any bullying on professional uh, television. Oh, <laughs> those, are the, those are the true athletes. No, I, mean, I kid, I kid. But I heard you talking about it, and I agree in terms of just quite yeah. an accomplishment um, in terms of he just wanted it. You know, he wanted it for the competition. And yeah. uh, if you didn't catch it, folks, Tiger Woods coming from behind. He had never won at the Masters, too, Larry, coming from behind. And uh, he comes from behind, wins the fifth jacket, and man, there was there was a lot of cool things in terms of just what he's done. So he becomes the second oldest guy at 43, of course, to Jack Nicholas. He becomes the second guy with the most screen jackets, having five to six for Jack Nicholas. Uh, Jack Nicholas won when he was 46 years old, two months and 23 days. Tiger, 43 years old, so he about yeah. three years. Um, and the first time Tiger won, it's pretty amazing because I remember it. I was 17 at the time in 1997. He was only 21 years old um, when he won that Masters by 12 strokes, uh, which was quite a number, man. Yeah. And on the flip side, since we're talking a little sports, I got to throw it out, man. Larry, I don't know if you caught it, but hockey is not going well for the likes of Tampa Bay, man. We, we crushed the regular season, and, uh, <laughs> and we are now down 3-0 to the eighth-seeded Columbus Blue Jackets. And uh, we, got a, we, got a, we got a lot to do. Yeah. We'll see if that happens. But, but nonetheless, pretty cool weekend, pretty cool Masters, yeah. and uh, back to the market. Um, so how about Citibank, too, as well, Larry? Let's check yeah. out how they're doing, because they have their earnings All these as well. bank stocks are looking very bad. Yeah, uh, and we get they really, they're acting poorly. We get Bank of America earnings tomorrow, I believe, so they can't be happy that everything seems to be lining up against them. Um, Citi down about 81 cents, 1.2%, uh, but it was as high as about 68.20, so you're down about a buck 60 off of that level even this morning. Um, yeah, and what was Citi? Let me just jump over. I had their numbers up as well. Because um, City, I know that they, they, they do well in the fixed income. That's what I was listening to a lot of um, talk today. There we go. So Citigroup, Citigroup earnings beat expectations, pretty similar to the first line of the Goldman, um, but revenues fall. So the bank 
Let's see if we get down here. Earnings of a buck eighty-seven versus a buck eighty, and then revenue though eighteen point five seven billion, and the expectation being eighteen point six three billion. And then, as I had stated, fixed income, currencies, and commodities. The FIC. Uh, 3.45 versus 3.05. Um, so without that, they would have been in trouble because equity trading 842 million versus 930. So they missed by almost 100 million in equity trading. Um, and investment banking, they, they beat as well. Yeah, so Bank of America, I know we get Netflix earnings as well tomorrow. A lot coming down the line. And how is that banking index doing today? Let's check it out. BKX. Should be getting hit pretty hard. I would say so, if right? Goldman yeah. Sachs is the leader of that one. So. Yeah, down about six tenths percent. That's a big number for the whole index, uh, trading at 98.90 um, right now. Well, the overall stock market doesn't look that bad. You know, we're only down a few points from the high we made uh, early last night at 14. We're only down eight points, so that's nothing in the S and P. No, I mean, and especially uh, when we're we're sitting basically yeah. at highs, right? I mean, not not quite, yeah. but we're at quite a staggering level. When you're yep. coming out with bank earnings that are that are disappointing to to really kick off uh, earning season and completion. So, Larry, are you a Game of Thrones fan? I don't even know what it is. Okay, Bobby. well, it's the television show of the century, <laughs> man. No. Uh, I thought Breaking Bad was a telephone. Oh, uh, well, a... you know what, man? You got me there. That's probably my favorite show ever. Uh, Game of Thrones might be a, a close second, but just an interesting story. So the whole world practically talking about Game of Thrones premiere last night of the final season on HBO at 9 o'clock. And pretty remarkable that AT&T can somehow stream that hours before. I mean, they must have contracts on lockdown so that this stuff doesn't happen. And when the whole oh world... Oh, my goodness. Right? I mean, can you imagine? I mean, that's not some mundane oh. detail, man. Um, and AT&T down about a quarter percent today. I don't even think it would have yes. to do with that. But it's just staggering, Larry, that, that somehow that can happen in such a it's worldwide... It's not an accident. It's not an accident, Tommy. Right? I said in yeah. the... You know, they're, they're getting... Number one... All of their direct TV now subscribers got to watch it hours early. Number two, their headlines are all over the news today, I'm sure. Um, so any press is good press sometimes uh, in that case. And let's check out, how's Nike doing this morning? I haven't even pulled them up because the likes of Tiger Woods. Slightly earlier because I know that they had a pretty good uh, quarter and everything, and it was making new highs. I know that. Yeah, so up 7 tenths percent. And, um, I mean, Tiger Woods, he's still their man. He was still wearing that swoosh on his, on his shirt. And they got to love that he's back in charge. In, in, they, didn't, they didn't let him go. They you know, didn't, man. Big. They stuck with him. you got to give him credit for that. They too, really did. And it's, um, they stayed with him the whole time. Now, they did shift in terms of that they don't even sell golf products anymore, which is pretty amusing in terms of, you know, when he last won his last major 11 years ago, um, they sold drivers. They sold everything. Now, they got out of that. They're in apparel. But in terms of the hardcore products, they don't sell it anymore. But they stayed with them, and they got to be excited, man, because he. Uh, you mean and to tell me they don't sell any golf products, and he's still their number one yeah, guy. Yeah, now they. I'm sure they might sell Shut something, but door. they used to sell, you know, clubs. They used to sell really sure. the the full lineup, and they got completely out of that industry um, and wanted to focus on more on apparel. And tied it into finance and money. You had one better out there that really had an exciting Sunday. You see this, Larry, putting $85,000 on Tiger to win it at about 12 to 1, 14 to 1, and he closed out $1.2 million for a win on Tiger on Sunday. That's, that's some action for you, man. Got to love that. Got to love that. All right, folks, come on back. We'll be back in three minutes. We get the Dow down about 45 points. S&P's negative by three. NASDAQ negative by 13. We'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien joined by Larry Pesavento this morning. We got markets pretty calm so far, just hanging around where we've been. Dow down 40 points, S&P's down about three, NASDAQ down about 17. So, Larry, I was listening to your program this morning. I know you were talking a lot about gold. Maybe we could jump to gold and just kind of talk about that for a bit for maybe those that didn't get a chance to tune in to trade what you see at 9 a.m. Um, I know you had some great analysis with what gold has been doing recently. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh, what I've done, Tommy, is I put the gold-silver index. We got it. Daily. Perfect. Okay. But you'll notice here uh, that where it says below here is bearish. Yes. Now, we've taken those lows out in both spot gold and silver. Okay. So, and you can see we're holding up extremely well for the stock, for the, the gold-silver stocks. So yeah. This is they, the XAU have, we're looking at, right? Yeah, that's correct. So I, I think when we get gold down to where another $30 lower, okay. which is the area of around 1257 to 1260 then we're going to be in an area where we can, uh, uh, you know, get it below that level. It'll still be bullish, but it'll it'll be a different pattern than what we're looking at here. What's amazing to me is, is the fact that it's still holding above the highs of uh, March and April both with the, with the big drop in gold and silver taking out those lows so there's somebody willing to step into the gold and silver miners here even though uh, prices are going down in the metal quite a bit so sure yeah that could be a very good sign but this is a very positive chart longer term but the positive one of course is that uh, the gold chart at that 1256 level that is just uh, beautiful head and shoulders pat I think I should put that up because some of the folks uh, yeah, let's do it. Because uh, I heard yeah, you talking about it. I yeah. wasn't even able to view yeah. it myself. I was listening yeah. to the program as I was flying yeah. around. Um, it, it's about as nice as head and shoulders. Well, it's perfect. Uh, you just couldn't get any better. The left there we shoulder go. Perfect. back in December. Yep. Then we had the head in August during the eclipse. Of course, that was the bottom there. And then we have the right shoulder forming, and that comes in on the 22nd of April, Tommy. If it's okay. if it's perfect, so that's one week, week from today. today. Yeah. And uh, that would be interesting because now we would be down six weeks in the gold, and that would take us down to that uh, spot level of around 1250. 7, 12, 60 is what we're looking at at nice. that point. And so. I see that even being like a 618 maybe coming off of that November low up. Uh... Yep. yep, it sure is. And 50% off the low from the head in August where the eclipse was. So okay. 
and double ABCD patterns, and then the head and shoulders. My goodness, it's uh, Mother God and Country. It's and, nice when they all line up yeah. like that, man. It sure yeah, well, is. It didn't always hit, but when they hit like that, you know, we had one in Bonds a few months ago when it was making head and shoulders. It was a really big move. It rallied more than five handles in Bonds. So the gold, if this could really be a big one in gold, because this is really uh, our first really clear uh, a, B, C, D pattern, I mean, super clear in the last year and a half. The other one between, you know, March and August of last year was, you know, straight down. We went from 1368 to 1168 with uh, just a couple of small A, B, C, Ds. This one we have several. So that's telling you that from a technical standpoint, people are at least looking at it at these levels. And that's that's what you want to see. Yeah, no, it's remarkable when you think about it. I mean, the consolidation we've been in for years right around this weather. It's 1,200 to 1,400 to 1,100. Um, yeah. It's remarkable. Tom had just put together the ad where he's been doing the gold report for 17 years. He started in 2002 when it was like under 300 bucks, made it all the way up to, I think, above 1,900 in 2011, retraced pretty hard, and then just kind of been hanging around at these levels for like five solid years. But a pullback from 1,350 down to 1,250, you're talking about $100. Um, maybe that gives it some room to, to start that leg up to the next side. Well, gold is one of the easier trading vehicles because it trades so perfect technically. You know, the euro is number one, of course, but gold is number two, I think, and crude oil will probably be number three. But uh, it sure is fun to trade. And when you stop and think it's a $129,000 contract and uh, you can trade it for just a few thousand dollars, you got great leverage. Yeah. And, and the execution is great because liquidity is is tremendous in the gold you know they they have a lot of liquidity so you don't get reamed on stops like you do on some you know some of the stock positions sure no definitely and uh we got i heard you talking about as well we got a four-day trading week coming up this week closed on friday for good friday and then um be interesting to see as and if that's the case the 22nd it's going to have a three-day weekend to do some action and maybe we'll open up on monday but yeah that high made on 192370 back in 2011 and really since about 2013 is when we creep crept below 1400 and then we've been trading in between about 1400 never made it below a thousand sitting in about 1288 in that range um, quite a consolidation and usually you know maybe we break lower maybe we break higher we will find out all right we got a caller let's go to our man john from philly john good morning tommy and larry good morning to you both sirs good morning hey, how are we Mr. doing see how you doing Good, thank you. Um, gentlemen, uh, thanks for all you do. I wanted to ask uh, the both of you um, if you could assist me, please, with what could happen in the dollar-yen. Uh, the prices we generally quote, if we're not looking at the futures, we're looking at USJY, which is the dollar-yen currency pair. It's currently 112. And um, I'm wanting to ask the question of both of you, um, can, given the pattern, and, and by the way, the pattern has grown incre incredibly quiet with an increasingly tight trading range. And I'm seeing one thing, and I'm thinking I'm kind of crazy, so I ask you this question. Can you envision a scenario looking at fundamental factors and the pattern in which the dollar yen USJY at 112 currently could be set to embark upon a significant rally over 115 up to 119 and conceivably back to the 126 top. I think that was four or five years ago. Well, I, I, I just posted the chart of the daily yen. And as you can see here, we're ready to break out of the highs from February. We're almost there right now. That takes us up to 113 and a half. And uh, you clear 114, you know, you easily can make uh, 116, 17, 18. I mean, you could easily do any of those numbers once it clears those levels. We had that big bank robbery, you remember, back on the, the 3rd of uh, January when the Japanese banks came in and played their game right at the close when there was no liquidity. And it pushed the yen all the way down to that 105 level and immediately rallied back to 108. I mean, that those people should be in jail. But, you know, this white-collar crime, but, you know, that's a bank robbery. It's just it's a, a legendary bank move, robbery. yeah, crazy. Yeah, it's just terrible that they can do that. And, but, and, yeah. and Larry, thank you for, for mentioning that. And let me just supplement an idea uh, that uh, fits with that observation. 
specifically this, that low down under 106, and I'll share this with you. I have a couple of data services I use, and the actual low that occurred, I think that was January 2nd, or was, if it wasn't that day, it was right around then. Uh, that price low occurred on a bout of selling at 5.30 New York time, which is after everybody in New York has essentially gone home and before the people in Tokyo are up at their desks. And so it was a flash and, oops. It's all right, you wanna hang on with us, John, for the break? Uh, thank you, yes. Okay, perfect. Come on back, folks. We're gonna be talking about dollar yen. We're gonna be talking about the markets. Right now, we get the Dow hanging in negative territory. Market's pretty calm to start off Monday trading. Back in three minutes, come back. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're gonna love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien with Larry Pesavento this morning, and we are on the phone with John from Philly, and we're talking about the dollar-yen. All right, John, so you were continuing to talk about that spike low. Maybe the New York time was closed at the time. If you can finish up what you yeah. were talking about. Yes, very, uh, yes, indeed, Tommy. January 2nd, the spike low, uh, 106, 105, 103.75, depending upon what um, uh, data services you're using. Uh, the last time something like that occurred was back in 2011, 
And it was, interestingly enough, it was at the time that Tom O'Brien Sr. was forecasting a major dollar bottom, and the dollar-yen bottom somewhere around 77 in a flash crash type of event, and then embarked upon a rally from 77 up to 125 over the span of a couple of years. And uh, as I'm assessing the pattern, uh, I'm trying to not fall asleep on, on the dollar-yen since it's gone quiet and want to be prepared for a possible major rally scenario. Fundamental reasons I can't quite figure out, and hence my questions for you, but that similarity between a spike low January 2nd, 19, and back in, I think it was April 2011, have me very suspicious, and the chart pattern that I see right now is uh, telling me be alert for a, uh, uh, a rally breakout, and hence my question to you on that. Yeah, I guess time will tell. Larry, do you have any comment on that one, or are we just looking at the charts, right? Yeah, those, those are planned aberrations. I don't know how they get away with it, uh, John, but they've done it several times. And, of course, the Swiss did a major robbery. You remember a few years back when they disassociated themselves from the euro for about 30 minutes and pushed the market down about $15,000 and bankrupted a few Forex firms. But, uh, unfortunately, there's no way to get around it. And they don't punish these people. And no one even looks into it, which is really the sad part of it. And you'd think that the people that got hurt badly would yell uncle or something, but they don't. So... I guess it's just all part of the game they play. So just like catching somebody short, if you you don't have stocks to deliver, you're in trouble. So I hate to see stuff okay, like that happen. Uh, thanks very much on that. Larry, with uh, with yen, dollar yen at 112, and you, you would reference the uh, 1st of March high. I think it's, it's right above us right here. Do you buy a breakout over that high? Uh, and that's 112.20, so it's right here. Uh, John, what I do on breakouts is I send my checks directly into Chicago Mercantile Exchange <laughs> to forego the commission because I don't do very well on breakout trading. I was just wondering if you stood by that <laughs> policy, and yeah, uh, evidently I do. you still do. So <laughs> thanks so much. John, we appreciate the call, man. Hey, thanks for calling Thank in, you. Mr. Z. Bye. Appreciate it. So I'm going to jump speeds a little bit, Larry. I believe we have Netflix coming out with their earnings tomorrow. I'm going to pull up their chart lot going on in terms of netflix so down today 1.25 percent nothing to dismiss at all down at 346 and of course uh we had last week disney launching their disney plus service extending those gains today up another three quarters of a percent as they're going to be coming out with that disney plus um be interesting to see how that happens now you have at&t time warner of course uh and to jump over we're talking about them in terms of them broadcasting their Game of Thrones a few hours early ahead of the premiere last night. But what do you see uh, in Netflix, Larry, when you look at this? Um, you know, it's been quite a stock, but pulling back even on the longer time, time frame, yeah. it traded from 423, that December 24th low of 261, and then we trade up almost $100 since that level, just since the beginning of the year. Um, well, it's it's a uh, you know it's a you know it's a very wild stock you know it's, it's got it's got everything going for it that you could possibly ask for. I'll bring up the chart so the folks can take a look at it because I do follow the Fang stocks every week in the letter. Um, th we had a lot of support at that 351 level. I don't know where it's trading today, Tommy, but uh, yeah, we're at 346.98 right now. Okay, so we did yep. break below that. I, I marked that because that was a 61 percent retracement. But the thing is. It's been in a really, really tight trading range uh, since the late February for well over six weeks now. Yeah. With a high of uh, 380 and a low of uh, 346 that we just tested again. So yeah. it looks like it wants to go lower. Yeah. No, I'm looking yeah. at your chart right now. I see yeah. those levels bouncing off it a few yeah. times. And, uh, yeah, so we must have made it yeah. below there on Friday and yeah. extending it a bit. Um, be interesting to see what they have to say, especially, yeah. I'm sure, you know, we're going to have their earnings tomorrow. Not sure what time we can pull it up. They're going to have a conference call, and I bet there's going to be a lot of analysts talking to them about the yeah. competition coming down the pipeline because you're going to have the Disney Plus, but you're also going to have the AT&T Time Warner in terms of, and that has HBO, 
um, that that has some capabilities as well in terms of competition. You know, for the first time, they're going to get some real streaming services that might actually be able to compete with the likes of uh, a Netflix. So I, I think they're going to get some questions. We'll see how they handle those. Mr. Reed Hastings, for the first yeah. time, really having some competition. Um, and I'm a huge Netflix fan. I am. But they're going to have some competition, um, which is the first time in a while to see how they handle that. Tommy, there's a really key spot here on this uh, Netflix uh, that we should all pay attention to. If you look back on uh, January the 4th, uh, the Dow was down 600 points that day, and Netflix was up. Wow. And whenever you see that, folks, you don't want to be short a stock that's uh, uh, when the market's down 600 points and then your stock is up, <laughs> it takes a lot of guts and a lot of information to buy that stock. But, and look uh, what it did right after that yeah, too, Larry, right? right? After it gapped up and it, you know, it ran And the market took points. off too, but the market didn't go from yeah. 280 to 350, right? In terms of just staggering yeah. the percentages. Um, oh yeah, it, it was by far. You see it, you know, on the same thing, if the market's up, and your stock is down, Oof. your stock is in trouble. You That's know, really when you can learn that. something, those divergences, yeah. right? Tom talks yeah. about it for sure. So yeah. you mentioned your letter, Larry. I was going to bring it up. You got a great Fibonacci 24-7, folks. If you haven't checked it out, I got even. Larry, I got your report up here last night. I'm just going to fly through it a little bit. But if you can talk a little bit about what you uh, put together, because, of course, you have your weekly reports that come out, you know, whether it's Sunday night, Monday morning, folks, I got it up here. You're looking at he's got videos of the, the markets, videos of gold. He's got charts of the week. You get the Dow up there, all these formations. And then, of course, a great just kind of summation with, uh, you know, what you're looking at in the markets. And then charts, videos every week, folks. Um, so, Larry, when you're putting together, you know, your weekend and stuff like that, because there's so much information. I go through it myself. It's a great start to the week. What are you looking at over the weekend? What's kind of, you know, you just look at everything, man, it seems like, you know, oh. you... No, Tommy, I, I have it uh, because I have to do it each week, and it takes me probably, oh, about six, about eight hours to do both uh, both letters because I do it for myself because I'm, sure. these are the trades that I'm looking at. So the first thing I do is I do the futures uh, letter because yes. that's the easiest one for me to do. I do 18 different futures. And I've got them categorized, so I pull them up, and then I update them to make sure, you know, what we're looking at is going to be correct. And then we uh, finish that, and then I, I, next thing I do is I'll do the FANG stocks and get those ready. And then the next thing I'll do is I'll start doing the overall stock market. I start with the banking index. Then I go to the Dow Jones, the, the NASDAQ, the S&P, the IWM and go through all of those and then uh, do the transportation and utilities too. We've got to pay a few bills, I guess. Yeah, we do. Folks, check it out. I'm just I'm teasing it. I'm sliding through the charts as you're talking about it, Larry. Right there, folks, under newsletter. Give it a shot. 30-day money-back guarantee. 97 bucks a month. Well worth it. New issue last night coming out. Fibonacci 24-7. We'll be right back, folks. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. 
Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien with Larry Pesavento. We got markets in negative territory, Dow negative 60 points currently. S&P is negative by 8, NASDAQ negative by 44. And Mary, Larry, maybe we could jump to uh, rates a bit. I know pretty calm day so far right now with the 10-year and the 30-year pretty flat, but that has not been the case recently, and um, we'll see where we hold. What are you looking at in the rate sector and as that contributes to the dollar? Well, I posted the chart of the German Bund. That's the we got equivalent it of the 30-year bond. You see, that's a, a major Gartley cell pattern up there. Made a beautiful ABCD, and it's come off uh, substantially, at least a little bit, starting out. Remember, those are negative interest rates, uh, Tom. You know, they charge yeah. you money for buying bonds. I, I don't understand it's that. quite a I time mean, we live in. Yeah, I hear you. I, I do. Don't, I don't understand it. I've had some smart people <laughs> explain to me that it's normal, and it, it doesn't make any <laughs> sense to me at all. I mean... I, I just don't understand it. I mean, the bank wouldn't do that for you, and your your uh, your relatives are not going to do it for you. No, so I agree. why is the market? It's important do it to keep you? that personal perspective sometimes, man. Because yeah, I mean, basically, yeah. what you're saying is, you know, here's yeah. my money, and I'm going to pay you to hold it, yeah. um, and and just just for the ability to yeah. make sure that you give it back to me at a time. And um, yeah, you better have you know your your uh, the spikes on on those shoulders, man, as you're hearing that because that's quite yeah. a world if that's if that's what becomes the norm. One of my favorite stories with Mark Douglas was oh uh, was December of I think 1996. We were in Chicago in Mark's building, and we were getting on the elevator. It was around midnight. We'd been out uh, at a concert. And as we were getting in the elevator, there was these two gentlemen holding the elevator for us. And uh, there were three of us, uh, Robert St. John, myself, and Mark. And I got on the elevator, and it was Ernie Banks. And uh, he was my, one of my heroes, you know, played for the Cubs. And I said, you're Ernie Banks. He said, damned if I'm not. <laughs> and he said, uh, and he said, do you ever loan money to your kids? And I said, no. I said, I give money to my kids because I don't ever expect it back. And he gives me a hug, and he says, to the guy behind him, he said, you see, he said, this guy understands what it's like about family. And he said, you're never going to get your money back from those kids. So why even say it's a loan? You know, <laughs> so you got to know where you stand, yeah. right? Totally. Yeah. Man. Yeah. It's and, a lot of fun. And not to bring it back, folks, this chart in Larry's service last night put out there. So check it out. Lots of good action in there. Lots of good action across the board. You know, the, the other one looks interesting, Tommy. If you look at the, I posted the chart here of the 30-year Treasury bond, this nice. uh, head and shoulders pattern that like we were similar, we're looking at in the... Uh, in the gold. Now, what's happened is you'll notice that 61% retracement we made two weeks ago was at 150.20, and that was a perfect 61% retracement yeah. from the three drive to a top pattern we made in August of 2017. That's a major top, and it took, uh, you know, well over seven months to complete it, and it did it in a beautiful technical format. That tells us that this head and shoulders pattern is in deep trouble, especially if it gets below 146. Okay. You know, we're trading. We got as low as 146.22, I think, this morning. And uh, we get below 146. This uh, head and shoulders pattern is kaput. It's not going to be working. 
Man, I know these rates. It's quite. It's quite a. And, and just the whole complexity of things, Larry, right? It's in terms of any time you get good economic indications, the market kind of freaks out because maybe rate hikes are coming. It's almost an inverse relationship where good market activity, the market gets worried that rates are then going to go up, right? And so then the market will pull back. I mean, the amount of variables that come into this, which isn't usually the case. Usually it used to be, oh, we got a, a booming economy, the market's going up. Now, coming off the zero interest rate environment with the Fed, um, we get good economic data, the fear is that they're going to come back to raise the rates. Just like when we got bad economic data, the market actually liked it because they said, hold on, the Fed's going to pause all those rate hikes. And um, so it's kind of inverse of how that's played out. It certainly is. It's different this time, and it's really different this time. <laughs> yeah. No, it's remarkable, man. It's, I don't it's... understand quantitative easing either. I never could understand that either, but that's uh, that's for the boys in the ivory towers to figure that stuff out. <laughs> and myself, Larry, it's pretty remarkable when I think about it. I mean, that, uh, you know, I am I am a product in terms of, you know, I'm almost 40 years old, but the rates wow. have been almost 0% um, yeah. for my, you know, entire existence in terms of, you know, we had the 2002, 2008, um, graduated college 2002, we had the 2008 financial crisis, so it's like I, in my adult, you know, life have, have not known a, a market very different, which, which is pretty, pretty obscure when you think about how, how different it seems to be. Wow, when I was 40, Eisenhower was president. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> Holy cow, baby. <laughs> Holy cow is right. Uh, all right, where are we jumping to next? Let me jump around. What do I have up here stored? Let's um, talk about the, the crude oil market. I think perfect, we're heading crude. Down. Yeah, I think that crude oil market's made a pretty significant top. I'll post the chart because here again we hit one of those beautiful 61% uh, retracements that we look at. Uh, quite a bit here, and you'll see that uh, that was around that 64. Let me get it up here in the sure. room so everybody can see it. That was at that 64 uh, 20 level. Okay. We're now trading at 6330, so we're down a little more than a handle uh, in that. If we get if we can get the crude below 62, that will certainly verify that that 61 percent retracement is a major high, I would think. But it's okay. uh, pretty much on. Yeah, and then, of course, you had last week, you had the Saudi Aramco bond offering. Seems like more people wanted that than you'd ever imagine. $100 billion um, coming into that market. Saudi Arabia seems to be doing just fine in terms of the financial being. And uh, that should be the case at 63. I mean, we're just sitting at 42. It's pretty remarkable how, how everything, almost, Larry, from that December um, Christmas Eve low, the volatility that we've seen in the market. I mean, just oil, 78 down to 42 back up to 63. Those 61.8%, those I'm seeing those on a lot of charts that you have um, been posting in terms of the, the pop we've gotten, the 61.8% pullback, and we've just been sitting at those levels um, and be remarkable. If you had said to anybody, Larry, right on December 24th that we might see, and even above $60 would be remarkable, but as in, you know, sitting flirting with $65, $70 oil, pretty remarkable. Yeah, and not only that, in the midst of a you know big scandal over there where they right. had somebody whacked, you know, and you don't right. even hear about it anymore. It's just it, it is remarkable, it's, yeah. and I hope that they talk about it a bit more because uh, they got quite a reprieve for such a heinous act to to be yeah. pulling in a hundred billion dollars worth of orders, oil at sixty three dollars, and uh, yeah, the new CEO of Goldman Sachs, right, Solomon, I believe, was over there recently. Um, so it seems like it's business as usual, which was, <laughs> I, it's remarkable, man. It yeah, is it's, remarkable. It's, 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 it tells you the news is uh, if you own the news, you own the world, you know. <laughs> yeah, and, and kind of that money talks, right, unfortunately, yeah. Um, yeah. which is uh, – a bummer sometimes, a bummer. Uh, so Best Buy, I'm jumping all around, but I saw they have a new CEO coming out, I guess. Yeah, down. I think she's just out of high school, looked like from her picture. Really? I haven't seen yeah. a picture yet. Yeah, she uh, doesn't look like she's 25 years old. She's probably 40, but she only looks 25. So Corey Berry is its new CEO yeah. and uh, the past CEO becoming the board's executive chairman. Um, and let's see, first woman to hold the CEO at Best Buy. Best Buy is going to be a case study as well in terms of just remarkable, the turnaround they've had. They were one of the first really facing some heat from Amazon, um, and they really turned it around, man. They are no longer just a showroom for Amazon. Um, so Corey's played a critical role in developing and executing the proven growth strategy in place today and confident they have the vision, skills, experience, leadership to be our CEO. That's the past CEO, Jolly Shang. And uh, a pretty muted reaction. You got Best Buy down about six-tenths of a uh, 
Yeah, six tenths of a percent. I'm just pulling it up. Let me get a short term. Yeah, spike to 72, so back above 73. Pretty muted. Market seems okay with that. Folks, we'll be right back for the final segment of the program. Stay tuned. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien with Larry Pezzavento. So, Larry, I see you have a profile up there for the new CEO. Not bad. Sent with yeah, the company yeah, for she, 20 years. So yeah, she's. <laughs> I thought she was 25. She's 43. She must. She must really like me. <laughs> 43, though. That is quite an age yeah. to be leading a company yeah. that is uh, a mammoth, yeah. of course, Best Buy. But yeah. with the company for 20 years, she became CFO yeah. in 2016. Always good to be having yeah. somebody running the company that understands the financial yeah. aspect of things, um, yeah. and the market seems pretty much okay with it. And. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, she's above minimum wage too. She oh, makes 4.4 million bucks a year. I would say year. so, and I, I would bet that's going up with stocks, <laughs> yeah. uh, stock, buy, stock uh, options of plenty coming into that CEO role for sure. Oh yeah. Uh, so just touching on some of the earnings that are coming down the pipeline for the final segment, pulling up some of the highlights. So tomorrow, let's see. So we got Netflix on tomorrow after the bell, Tuesday after the bell. We get IBM set to post theirs on Tuesday as well. United Airlines coming out with their earnings Tuesday. We got Morgan Stanley Wednesday before the bell. Abbott Labs Wednesday, PepsiCo Wednesday, uh, Amex on Thursday, and they just keep going, man. It's gonna be quite a week. It'd be interesting to see how it happens. Netflix, of course, so Netflix after the bell tomorrow. 
Um, we'll see what happens. That, that one's, um, uh, I'm interested from a personal perspective, Larry. I just think it's really interesting in terms of that fundamental perspective of who's going to subscribe to what. I'm a Netflix yeah. subscriber. I'm an Amazon Prime subscriber. Um, I don't think I'm going to be a Disney Plus subscriber. No children in the household just yet. Um, <laughs> but, but we'll see what happens, man. Netflix, though, ahead of that earnings. Netflix now down 2% as it is sliding, Larry. I don't know what's of, happening. A lot, lot of competition. A lot man. of competition. You know, I agree. Yeah. Larry, thank you so much for joining yeah. me, man. See Always you. a pleasure. See you tomorrow. Folks, you. check it out in terms of Fibonacci 24-7, brand new weekly issue right now on the Hot Press. Uh, stay tuned. We got Fast Market, TD Ameritrade next, Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White, and uh, we got a treat this afternoon as well. Have a great Monday, everybody.